Thank you. I'm um, calling the meeting out of recess. Mr. Birch, um, you're all set up and ready to go. Identify yourself for the record and then proceed. Ross Thank Birch, you. Executive Director of the Island of Hawaii Visitor. <coughs> So the first uh, slide you have there is actually where we finished uh, 2017 and it basically was a record year for the island of Hawaii. Uh, we finished the year at 1.762 arrivals where last year was at 1.55. So we had a 13.7% in visitor arrivals. The expenditures are on about almost the exact same pace, a little bit higher, where we ended up the year at $2.4 billion, where the previous year was just over $2 billion. So we had a 14%, 14.7% increase there. Of course, visitor days, when you add in visitor arrivals plus the length of stay, visitors days increased by 11.2%. And then the average daily spend uh, had increased 3.2% year over year to 185.30 and the per person per trip spend went up just slightly because of the reduc reduction in average length of stay so they kind of washed out so the total spend for the vacation was $1,361 uh, per person per trip spend a lot of this is due because of the influx in the seats we have coming into Kona the increase in seats year over year for 2017 was 15.5 percent we had 984,000 direct seats this does not include inner island seats at all this is just direct access seats Hilo had a small increase of 7 percent which basically they went from five days a week to seven days a week on United and that created that 7 percent bump for the Hilo and it's just one flight per day that Hilo has for direct access. So total air seats for the island were over a million uh, with a 15 point or 15 percent increase for the total year. The next slide kind of gives us the historical on the arrivals. You can see the last height that we had was 1.62 million visitors was in 2007 and basically we kind of climbed a hill up to the point where we're at now 10 years later so that's actually you'll see through history that that's very similar you'll see a 10-year ramp up drop down ramp up as we go through so it's very similar we did have an enormous jump from 16 to 17 though that kind of pushed us way above and gives us any type of padding once we start that return Total spending was on that same type of ramp up, and again in 2017 saw a huge jump from the, the 2.09 billion to the 2.4 billion. Uh, previously to that, the highest we had was 1.9 billion dollars. Air seats. There seems to be a trend here. You guys see the the same type of pattern with all the graphs here is. A little bit of a height in 2007 drop down and then a gradual increase as we go over the last three to four years the main focus and from airlines along with the Hawaii Tourism Authority and other promotions have been to redirect air lift to the neighbor islands directly so that's why you saw in the last four years large jumps from 686,000 seats in 2014 up to today at 984 seats coming into 984,000 seats coming into Kona. You can see that Hilo has relatively stayed pretty flat, pretty similar from 2011 and a period of time when we had no direct access in 09 and 10. That, from a Hilo standpoint, I have to give total credit to my predecessor, George Applegate, on this one as he met directly with United Airlines and without his efforts, United would have not come into Hilo. There was no reason for United to come into Hilo other than his pushing and his intent to get a direct access into Hilo. So those numbers have kind of stayed relatively flat, but they've stayed there, which is great. The next slide is one of all the direct access. So this is 
a lot of these are some of my go-to slides that I use in a lot of my day-to-day -day communications or when I'm working with a lot of our counterparts. Um, we create different slides that helps our partners out as well. So this slide shows you every flight that we receive on a daily basis coming into Kona and then into Hilo. You also see the United Daily. So we have American, we have Dallas, Denver, Los Angeles. We have, um, we will have four daily flights. Actually, we'll have six daily flights out of Los Angeles starting in March. We have a daily from Alaska uh, out of Oakland. We have Phoenix. San Francisco has four daily. San Diego, four times a week. San Jose, three times a week. Uh, Seattle is uh, five days a week. And then Delta is daily out of Seattle. And then we have our uh, seasonal out of Anchorage, Bellingham, Oakland, Vancouver, out with two different air, airlines. On the international side, um, thanks to the governor and his team and our county representatives for pushing, pushing, pushing to get our direct access into Kona. Back for uh, the international side, we have Hawaiian Airlines flying three times a week from Haneda, and we have a daily flight from Japan Airlines out of Narita. And then you can see there that we have more than 40 daily inner island flights between Kona and Hilo. Jumping to the occupancy average rate and rev par. Uh, rev par is the revenue per occupiable room. Uh, the occupancy you can see, um, I did a comparison of just our island for the last couple of years the entire island versus the Kohala coast, um, which has probably the best statistics we can get. Then we also have you, uh, the bottom part of the page, you can see the comparison between the rest of the islands. On a regular basis, you've seen that our occupancy has been bottom of the list on each year uh, as far as total occupancy. Only this most recent year in 2017 have we gotten close and broken the barrier of, of a 74% annual occupancy rate in our hotels. And remember, this is just hotels only, and this is just the hotels that report. So this isn't the big picture catch-all of what our occupancy is for the island. So the visitor plant inventory. So this is how the breakdown of all the rooms are. So you can see that we ended the year uh, for our island in 2017, we had a total of 11,284 rooms. And it'll give you the breakdown between the apartment hotel, B&B, condo hotel, uh, hostels, hotel, vacation rental units. Is On this record shows 2,000 vacation rental units. Uh, on the other slide, uh, right next to it, or part of this slide, the right-hand side, you can see how our island stacks up versus the rest of the islands uh, on a total number of units. So we come in at 11,284 compared to Maui, which has 21,000 units. Here's the report that came out recently. Um, for the end of 2017, it shows what the um, individually advertised units are. So DBET's gone beyond just recording what uh, inventory we have on island as far as what's recorded and what units are viable units. They've gone a step further and actually have done research through the online platforms to see every single unit that is advertised and available. So the number of individually advertised units for our island was at 8,647 units. That's a 16% jump over 2016. And if you looked at the previous slide when it talks about the recorded units of vacation rentals to equal the 11,000 units we have, there's only 2,000. So we've got a gap of over 6,000 units that are only accounted for in 
the advertised units. They are not recorded through the state as far as any type of connection via TAT, GET, or any other taxes. <clears throat> so the next, the bottom of that slide is the, the number of bedrooms. So basically you take the number of units and then multiply it times the number of bedrooms per those units. So these could be two, three bedroom condos. They could be a, a, a room out of someone's house that since the house isn't recorded, it's just a, a room. So we have basically uh, 16,000, almost 17,000 uh, units at the end of 2017 recorded. So we have, that, that math is very similar. So we have, if we have 11,000 uh, units that are recorded, we still have that gap of about 6,000 units that are in between what the advertised unit says and what the recorded um, inventory is. And then this breaks it down by type. So advertising units by type, uh, you'll have your individually advertised units that are the, the houses, the condos, B&Bs, private room, shared room, other, and then a total for the island. So that's how the breakdown of the 8,616 uh, units are and then a percentage of each one of those types of units for each of the islands as well. Accommodations preference. Um, on a monthly basis, the Hawaii Tourism Authority through DBED as well provides information on where people stayed during their vacation. So in 2017, you can see that of all the places that they stayed, you've seen a pretty big increase um, in almost every type of unit where a private room and a private home is, is at 22%, shared room space, private room is up 18%. So you see that that market is, is growing. As our occupancy in the hotels grow, so will that number as well. The timeshare only you see is also almost at a 12% increase year over year because of our change in inventory from our hotels dropping the number of rooms and converting them to timeshare, that number will continually grow over the next few years as well. The next slide is uh, the average daily census versus the resident population. So you can see the number of um, tourists or visitors we have um, as far as 2017 compared to uh, the resident population. And then on the chart next to it, you can see how many, uh, what the comparison of how many bodies are on island at any given time. Next slide is uh, 2018 visitor forecast. Um, based off of what we have from confirmed lift, potential lift, what we're looking at coming into the island, what the occupancy is with still availability on the occupancy point, um, the estimates for arrivals for our island is still to grow at double digit increased pace to 1.9 seven four million in 2018 expenditures will be on a very similar pace actually it, that's a very conservative number from the expenditures as we start getting more and more visitors the price of the hotel rooms and that price of everything is going to start to go up so more visitors we're going to get higher rates so that 2.71 billion is a conservative number Total visitor days will be on a very similar pace as it has been in the last year. Um, per person, per day spend, you'll see is going to make almost a, a $10 jump to $194.57. And then the per person, per trip spend will be at about 3%. So you'll see about an average of $100 per stay uh, increase. Length of stay. We're predicting a little bit higher going into 2018, so we'll have 7.4 days, which is on a historical number is very similar to what we've had. 
and then the direct seats. These are already confirmed seats that we had, which is the influx of new lift that came in in December, along with the new flights from Japan. We're going to have a 35% increase in seats going into Kona and have 1.33 million seats into Kona directly. And we're going to have a 26% into Hilo with 60,000 seats then going in directly. So the total air seats are now 1.392 million coming into the island, which kind of, that's where the prediction starts and brings us back to where the numbers will be moving forward. This doesn't include any potential new flights that we have scheduled or could be scheduled for 2018. And there's already talks of, this doesn't include the daily flight with Hawaiian Airlines starting in March. So that's not recorded in these potential numbers. There's talk about a secondary flight from Japan Airlines coming into Kona from a different city. Korean Airlines, ANA is looking. All these airlines are looking at Kona as now the option or at least branching off and pulling some of the lift from Honolulu to coming to Kona from an international standpoint. So the numbers we have on the airlift even had a 35% increase are conservative. And all indicators show that there's nothing that should pull that out of there. The, uh, the demand's high. Uh, the next slide you see is kind of showing the hot spots on where um, the big increases are coming from, uh, from the U.S. mainland and from international. Um, one of the biggest places we had that's going to be a huge increase is the Denver. Uh, went from once a week to daily. So you see a big 130% increase there. Uh, Portland has a 50%, 56% increase. San Francisco has 88 because they increased three daily flights at the end of December. And then from an international side, you'll see about a 53% increase with just the existing flights we have currently. Um, you'll see 75% increase because Japan Airlines was only started in September. And this is the full run of the year on how many seats will come in at that point. Uh, Hawaiian Airlines will also be increasing a little bit from their side. And Hilo, it's basically the LA flight is going to increase as well. Uh, they're changing aircraft is what that increase is. <clears throat> the next slide is increased direct air access to neighbor islands. This chart, like every other chart, is kind of very similar. You've got kind of that bump in 2007, a drop down, and then a gradual pickup as you go through. The numbers to look at here is the, the distribution of inbound flights, direct flights, into Honolulu versus the neighbor islands. In 2018, the prediction is that we're going to have 50% of the flights to the neighbor islands and 50% of the flights to Honolulu. So that's the redistribution of the visitor plant or the direct access coming into the island. One of the indicators that will show that the airlines will still continue to fly those besides having the demand we have for the island is that the oil prices um, calculated out through 2022 uh, are going to be relatively flat and stay below the $65 per barrel price point. So that's, from an airline standpoint, that's stability. That means that they can still fly the, these aircraft with lower load factors if they run into that without pulling the routes immediately. The next page is a snapshot of the cruise line update. Um, you can see how the cruise line has been pretty flat. And the cruise lines for us in 2004, 5, and 6 were at an all-time high and it was an anomaly. We had more cruise ships coming in and we had five times the number of cruise passengers during those three years than we did in the 10 years prior or after. So we, it's, it's a cyclical thing as well as, as there was, the cruise lines saw that it was an opportunity so they brought it here. So 2016 we were at uh, 690, um, thousand total for our island uh, between Hilo and Kona uh, it's very similar numbers except for Hilo does get um, extra ships to come in 
mainly because of the pier support. So you're gonna see higher cruise ship numbers in Hilo than you will in Kona, mainly because the cruise ships can go dock directly at the harbor rather than paying extra or having the support of the tenders. So that's why those numbers are a little different. The good news is, is we are increasing and not decreasing. So there's small amounts of increasing. A couple of new cruise ships have come on board. Uh, cruise ships have added a day here and there. So we're gonna see a little bit of an increase there, but not much. I, this is um, not a huge bump in, in tourism for our island either way. So the share of the visitor arrivals by island, um, <clears throat> this is a statistic we do that shows the comparison of our US East and West markets versus the rest of the international markets. So as you can see, our island um, tends to have the most international um, visitors compared to the other two neighbor islands. Oahu by default, by having the most flights come in and usually having a stop over one or two days is that's why they're um, very similar on a 50-50 basis. We get quite a few of those international visitors that are coming. Japan's very strong for us and, and actually all other um, international markets from Europe to Australia to New Zealand, China, Korea, all of those different areas are up year over year for us as well. So it's gonna start creeping a little um, higher and higher. And that's the snapshot of kind of the overview of all the different market segments of where we're at, where the near future is gonna be. Um, what I've prepared for you as well is I have USBs for all of you at this presentation, a presentation that shows a little bit more on, on the demand that we have moving forward in the future and where that demand's coming from. So it'll kind of tie in a little bit more. I couldn't put all those slides together in a brief period of time. And then um, I also have an updated TAT calculation through 2018 on this as well. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Birch, for that presentation and the information provided. Council members, yeah. Scott, could we have the lights? Thank you. Sorry, I ran through so fast, but I want to make sure. No, that was time. perfect. Thank you. Uh, I didn't hear the warning go off for the tsunami of information that was coming at us, but I do really appreciate what you did. And thank you so much in advance for the other documents you're going to be presenting to us. Um, more of a address to the council. We'll discuss this a little bit further later. Um, from an economic projection standpoint, uh, we have some decisions to make because if we're going to take care of our county, obviously we're going to have an impact of more tourists coming forward. And we need to be mindful of that as as we do our planning and see where we can seek those revenues. So with that, I'm going to yield at this point. Thank you, Mr. Richards. Uh, anyone else? I always love all of this information <laughs> from you. Um, you. I just want to take you back to the slide on the forecasted air seats. Uh, Denver with a 130% jump and then Japan with the 75% jump. Um, these are all directly into Kona. These are all direct flights to Kona. And their average stay is somewhere between like that five and seven day Se seven point two days, days is the average length of stay now. The average length of stay has dropped a couple percentage points kind of year over year for two reasons. One, the Japan influx. They stay fewer days on, on a normal basis, and they'll do more islands typically. The other one is all the direct access we have coming from the West Coast, be it San Francisco, LA, San Diego, across the board. And the price points that are now there have allowed the California customer to come over for a long weekend and justify it. So we're seeing a three day to three and a half day stay which is bringing the total down. We still have 12 to 15 to 21 day stays with a lot of our different customers, but the majority of our business comes from the West Coast and they're staying less. So that's where it's really showing it. I yield, thanks. Thank you, um, Ms. Leloy. Um, Ms. O'Hara, 
don't have numbers on the slides, but it was one of the early on ones. Occupancy average rate, revenue par, um, per arrival, I guess. And you had mentioned, you said this was only hotels only and just those that report. So we have hotels that don't report? Absolutely. It's voluntarily. Okay. So it's all voluntary. Yeah. Oh, do we have any idea of what percentage of our hotels are reporting? We're at about 75% of our hotels are reporting, but that's it. Okay. No other category has their own reporting type system. Okay, so you're, you have to guess at the other portion, the 25%. Well, we, that, we'll start taking a look at how many rooms we actually have available on the island versus how many arrivals we have, look at the length of stay, and you can kind of figure out we're still running between 50 and 60 percent as a total island. Okay. So yeah. when you put kind of do your own internal calculations of here's how many people, here's how long they're staying, here's how many rooms we have, that's how they get their <coughs> occupancy percentage anyway. All right. And um, you said that um, we've done a um, kind of flushed out uh, vacation rental units um, by looking here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> To, to find if they are advertised, but we don't have as many advertising as we have on island. Is that my understanding? The percentage that are advertising is below what we actually have. We actually have more advertised vacation units than we actually have hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understood. Yeah. No, I wasn't making that comparison. I was just saying that um, there's quite a few that aren't being advertised. The difference between what's actually recorded on the visitor plant inventory, the visitor plant inventory comes from the state which is in the database of taxation. So if you pay TAT taxes and you pay GE taxes, the recorded rooms are the 11,000 rooms. The difference of five to 6,000 rooms are the ones that are not recorded with the state. So we have about five to 6,000 rooms um, that we can't track through TAT payments. Is that what my understanding is? We can is? only track them through them advertising on a platform. Okay, okay. So um, it's pretty clear we have a little bit of a problem there with TAT. I did spend a little time on that section, mainly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I'm just trying I'm, to I'm highlight I'm throwing this. the statistics out so that... Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The rest of you can take the statistics and make the decisions. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I'm just going to ask, do you have any recommendations on how to close that gap? I'll start by where it's been, it's almost been a free-for-all, where there's no reason for someone not to put a secondary home or a piece of property or even a speculation purchase into a vacation rental because there's no penalties. I can pay my mortgage with a vacation rental without paying a higher real estate tax, without having a huge management company that would take 50% of it. I can just throw it on Airbnb or VRBO or any one of the platforms. It's real simple as a transaction. If you're in a long-term rental, there's laws and stipulations in the favor of the tenant in most cases. So if you've got someone that's in a six month to a year lease, it's really hard to get a not so good tenant out where if you're on the vacation rental, you know, in 10 to 12 days, they're gone. You don't have to deal with them anymore. And if they choose to come back, you can say, sorry, my rental's not available for you. So there's, there's no reason why you wouldn't want to put your, your second home or, or an opportunity into a vacation rental. It is, it's good money right now. And the way our tourism's going, the demand's there, and you're going to get a really good return on your investment very quick. 